with Gentleness of Stories, we're having a very special guest. His name is Mr. Andrew Soriano. Hi! Hi! So good to be here. Yeah, good to be here, good to be here. <laughs> so um, we're going to show you guys a little clip about who he is, an international award-winning photographer. Let's check it out. Mr. Andrew Soriano a few questions. Can you tell us your name and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. You just told the audience my name. Oh. Andrew Soriano, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you about myself. So, my name is Andrew Soriano. Um, some people know me from my award-winning works, which is, you know, the picture that you see right here. This is called Around the Thunder Rain. It um, won the award from Sony World Photography Award and also featured in the National Geographic. So basically what I do is I work with major companies in helping them grow their business using photography. Some of my clients include the National Geographic, um, Sony, uh, Ministry of Tourism in Thailand and a lot more. So that's basically what I do. And then um, apart from that I also spend some time to mentor people in photography. So people from different backgrounds, they come to me and ask me to be mentored in photography. I've, I have students from so many industries, um, logistics, you know, uh, business factory, and they want to develop a keen sense of photography and that's where I help them. Wow, that's a very noble, noble mission that you're yeah. on, yeah. isn't it's it? Yeah, making an impact. Yeah, it's making, making a major impact in the photography in the industry. industry. I, I don't think I've met so a lot of photographers like you. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's, a, well it's, it's different because I didn't start out as a photographer, mm -hmm. so I was an engineer by training and then I went to get my MBA degree, so I have an engineering skill and business skill. And then I add photography into the mix and it becomes like this very dynamic career that I really enjoy up to this point. Wow, wow, wow. Such a multi-talented multi person we have here. What are the highs and lows of making a living as a photographer? Well, okay, the first thing is, you know, I, I used to work in a corporate setting, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you get paid, like, monthly, you mm -hmm. know, so you never yeah. miss a paycheck un unless you get fired, right? <laughs> yeah, So, for sure. um, But that's, that's actually one thing that you have to know, that if you're working as a freelancer, then it's going to be up and down both in finance, you know, mm -hmm. and in, in, in workload. So you really have to plan ahead, way ahead of time, like, you know, you have to think three to six months in advance, like how are you going to cover your day-to-day -day finances and, and so on and so forth. And that's not uh, something that you have to worry about if you are working in the corporate world, right? But the uh, high end is you can charge as much as you want, basically. There is no yes. limit, you know, there's no limit to that. Because you're an artist and this is your work, yes. nobody can ever be you, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. You're you, you're unique. There's yeah. only one you in this world and <laughs> really must charge <coughs> what you're comfortable with. Yes, right? like you're a rare commodity. Yes, you are actually not a commodity. You are, you know, special talent. Yeah, Yeah. Every each and every one of the photographers out there have right. their own individual specialty exactly. and are unique in their very own way. I'm about to ask you, like, what, are, what is your current vision and mission? What yeah. are you, what quest are you on? Okay, the, the first, it, well, this one is going to relate to what I said to you in the beginning that yes. I'm helping companies yes. grow their business using photography. So a lot of companies, they, they are still unsure on how to use photography for their marketing. Mm. You know? But right now we live in such a visually driven world, you know, with the Instagram, you know, yes. uh, Facebook yes. and all the social media. And all the millennials and all the millennials. Mm. And 
photography is a way to communicate you know, to your customer, to your audience, and uh, photography is also giving a very strong message, a subconscious message about what you are and what you do, and it's also a tool to build trust and rapport. Yes. But unfortunately, a lot of companies don't know how to do that. They think photography is just like a poster, you know, <laughs> like, you know, take a picture and then slide this here, you know, slide on, on this brochure, slide on this social media. It's, it doesn't work that way, you know. Yeah. You have you have to uh, use photography as something that can draw your customer in and then communicate your value and then make them inspired by what you do. So that's one thing that I, I do. Uh, so my vision is helping businesses to get better in photography and in turn that will help them grow. I think that's a very noble cause that you're trying to <clears throat> establish in your day-to-day -day life. I, I've heard that you've said to me before a little something about photography becoming the tool to get to know the world. Right, and yes. that's the second part which is I help people um, discover more about themselves and their world through photography. And this is, um, I do this through very tightly close community and mentoring. So I don't have, you know, uh, a very large student base. I have a very few, but very committed students, and they come from all over the world, not only Indonesia. I have students from the US, Netherlands, Australia, um, Thailand as well. And all of them are very committed in learning photography to grow personally and to explore more about their world. How do you communicate with them? Like, do you FaceTime? Um, well, okay, um, email, FaceTime, yes, sometimes, um, Skype, um, what else? I'm actually building a website ah, a where website. yeah, I can upload a video weekly and my student can an online class? Yeah, online, online mm -hmm. class, yeah. Students can take course, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, get feedback from me and from the community. Uh, it's called inspiragallery.com. Ah, and um, it's, it's still under development, but it will be up very soon. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will definitely like check out and send the customer knows when it's up. Wow, yes. yeah. You should definitely let us know when, yeah. when it comes to it. You know, we'll having several students, I think, is a lot more effective than having yes. a whole classroom of students right, who right. don't really get the thing. Yeah, because right? uh, one thing that I believe is transformation doesn't happen in isolation. Yes. So you have to, I you know, agree. grow, um, mm -hmm. you know, learn from each other and then give feedback and so on and so forth. I, I myself, I learn a lot when I teach. So yes. that's one of the reasons why I love teaching. Wow, that's yeah. a very interesting statement. You know, I've also heard this, um, we don't need more positive people, but we need positive people to be louder. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I, we need positive people to take action. Yes. Because there are so much information now, mm -hmm. but there are so few people actually being resourceful and you know, using that information for a good cause. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we don't need more information, we need more implementation. Yes, definitely. Explain the value of photography as opposed to videography. Though we're switching topics here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, well, photography will um, will be there. Will always be there. It doesn't matter if photography videography is, is not growing because number one, photography can be put like anywhere. You know, if you want to print like a big billboard, you, you do it through photography. You cannot put a video on a billboard. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's from a logistical standpoint, it will have more reach than videography. Mm -hmm. And then um, second part is you don't have to spend more than, I don't know, one minute to look and understand what a photograph is. But with uh, videography, you have to spend at least two minutes to know what's what's going on there. Yes. So time constraint. So photography is uh, superior in terms of logistic and also time. Especially in this fast moving world. Yes. Exactly. Where everyone's mm -hmm. making a decision in just like less than one second. Yes. We don't really right. have the time to watch yeah, a two like, minute trailer to yeah. actually want to watch that movie, right? right? right. If you want to know about something, you just go to your Instagram profile and then you just see like a few photos and then you make a decision about yes. who, who this person or this company is really is, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we make a decision now. So photography captures first impressions, which right. are very important. Yes. And um, can I ask what your main focus is right now in terms of photography? What project are you Okay, uh, the one that's coming up like end of this week is I will be going to Thailand to help the Ministry of Tourism there. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, Thailand, I think Thailand 
really knows the power of photography to transform um, the culture in the country. Wow. So um, they have this project called the Tourism Development uh, is with Asian pop culture. So they look at several potential cities across Thailand and they are going to build a new tourism destination on those places and they invited artists from all over the countries, um, selected artists, to contribute to that project. So oh, wow. we use photography, art, music, um, basically to grow a community and make it like a very strong base for future tourism. That's what, what I'm doing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's very innovative. I've never really thought about photography becoming the major key to change a whole nation. Yes. Right? Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. So I think it's a very noble thing that you're doing for yes. the people. The people, yeah. yeah. I know. You know, when I was there, um, I I had to do like a, several shots, right? And then the mm -hmm. shots ended up being printed like the whole building. So like wow. the whole building was covered. <laughs> with my photograph and like a lot of people came up to me and thanked me and then they gave me like a lot of durians and stuff. Wow! Because it's like the, the common culture there. We really appreciate what yeah, you're doing they, they, they to really their city. It. Yes. May yes. I maybe know what city you're it's living Trump. in. It's Trump. T-R-A-T. T-R-A-T. It's um, one hour flight from Bangkok and three hours by, by car. Oh, wow. That's very amazing. I've never really heard about that city before, but yeah. since but you're working on it, yeah. we should be li yes. we should be hearing news from it yeah, soon hopefully enough. in the next two or three years it will become like a major uh, tourism hub oh, yes. and then uh, yeah people will know yes yes yeah. do you have a main focus when it comes to receiving projects you know, oh yes because i have a lot of project um, requests mm -hmm. well my main focus is number one is impact right how big of an impact am i making this project and there's also the financial right because you can make impact without the finances, right? Yes. So I, w I want to see if you know they have the two resources. Mm. If those are the two criteria that, that I look for in a project. And then also, um, I like to work with clients who exactly know what they want. Yeah. You know, okay. I don't like working with clients who's like wishy you know like, like oh, maybe I want yeah. this and want that. Who's you not know, sure about yeah, what they I'm not need. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they can consult with me, but. Uh, if they, that's their attitude, then maybe I'm not the right guy for them, you know? Yes, yes. You're more of a like, what do you want? I'll do it for you, unless... It, it, no, actually, it's more like, um, how can we create the biggest impact on this project, and how can I contribute to that? Oh, and that, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that, yeah there will be a lot of sense. exchange of ideas back and forth, but you have to make sure that the client is the right one to work for at the beginning. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with the client that you don't really want to work with. So, yeah, we've yeah. all been there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, a little about photography. Let's okay. switch the topic back to photography, to basic photography, okay. even okay. for our viewers out there, um, who's especially trying to attempt starting on yes. becoming a photographer. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about sure. how you got here? So I got to photography by accident, right? I, I wasn't. Um, intending to learn photography or anything like that. It was just out of boredom because I was bored working in the corporate world back mm -hmm. in the US. Mm -hmm. and then I was trying to find something to do on you know, my spare time that can uh, cure my boredom. Mm -hmm. So um, at that time, uh, e-commerce was just starting to grow and uh, eBay was really popular. So a lot of people are you know selling stuff on eBay. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to sell some, some of my stuff on eBay. And then I noticed something really special there, which is like the exact same item can sell for different price. Oh, if wow. one has like a better photo. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I, I, I thought to myself, well, if I want to s my item to sell at the highest price, I need to learn how to take good photos. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? Yes, it and definitely then, makes yeah, sense. Product. Product, product photography, that's product. my first foray into yes. photography. So from there, I, I really enjoy the process, even though like you know, I was using a like, very basic pocket camera, I was using like light box, you know. Use what we have, right? Yeah, use yeah. what we have, and then, uh, all the lighting is very simple, um, but I really enjoy the process of um, creating an exposure, you know, um, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and how those three variables interlink to each other, mm -hmm. and um, basically just go from there. And after I mastered the product photography, I was trying um, family portrait photography, um, landscape photography, you know, all kind of different subjects, and then I ended up like, hmm, I really cannot choose like from all these 
subjects because they are all part of life and they are all interesting. So I decided to become a travel photographer. Ah, oh, because it includes called. every. It includes every thing. facets. Yeah, you yes. have culture. You have um, um, product. uh, product still life. Uh, landscape. Uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Interact with the people as well. You interact with the people. You know about the business. Right, right, and it helps on my business as well. Let's talk about how we should start. As a photographer, okay. how should you recommend those who want to start working in this industry, in this red ocean industry, where, where there's like a million photographers out there? How do you make yourself valuable amongst okay. everyone else? Well, number number one is don't do what everyone else is doing. So if you're just another wedding photographer, if you're just another portrait photographer, you're not gonna get very far. That's the red ocean. Yeah. So you have to create your own blue ocean, right? which means you need to find skills, preferably from um, other skills other than photography, and then marry it with your photography skill to create your own blue ocean. For example, I met a guy called Brian Smith. Uh, mm -hmm. He's from the US. I met him like two weeks ago. He came to the Sony Alpha Festival. Mm -hmm. He is a portrait photographer, but he's only specializing in um, celebrities and important people. Mm -hmm. So he's not just another portrait photographer, he specializes in that field, you know. So, I mean, who can have access to shoot Bill Gates, Sir Richard Branson? Not just anyone. Not just anyone, right? So you have to create your own blue ocean. That's one way of creating your blue ocean, marrying your photography skill with another skill. And then if you can, put another skill in. That's how you build your own blue ocean and that's how you keep your competition very low. I see. So. What are your thoughts on photographers who aren't very, very confident about what they're doing, especially beginners? You know? Okay, well, number one, you have to spend some time to be good at what you're doing, which is the photography part. Mm -hmm. Then after that, if you really want to make a living in this field, then you better learn about business and marketing. Yes. Right, definitely. because mm -hmm. if you don't know how to sell, if you don't know how to present, then how are you going to make a living from just pressing a button in your camera? Yeah. Right. That that explains so much. I mean, yeah. like I've met a lot of photographers out there who are confident enough with their with what they're doing. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. like it's a shame because mm -hmm. they're very good at it. Yeah. Just they don't really they don't know, know how to present, yes. how to market themselves, how to connect to people. Yes. Yes. And that's kind of a waste, I guess. Right. Like, right. Are you seeking to find these photographers? To teach them? To teach them, yeah. yeah well, like, it's very hard, you know, because some people get so fixated into one thing, especially mm -hmm. in business, mm -hmm. and some people are very close-minded, mm -hmm. but if they are open-minded, then, you know, I'd be happy to be a mentor for them. So it's, you know, they have to deal with... So if I was a photographer, a beginner mm -hmm. photographer, what would you tell me to do first? Like, okay. I want to start a career as a photographer. Okay. Uh, number one is master exposure, mm -hmm. which is the how you need to learn how the um, aperture, um, shutter speed, ISO works. You know the technical aspect, and then also master the composition and lighting, right? Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. understand what you're shooting, understand about your what your subject is. That's how you get a basic uh, mastery of photography. Should I have vision on yes. what I should do? With yes, my actually, um, I wrote a book called Traffic Light Photography System which explains how beautiful photographs are created. Basically, you just have to follow the traffic light, red, mm -hmm. uh, yellow, and green, right? So red light is, you, you need to stop and think about your vision, right? What are you trying to communicate with your photo photographs? And number two is uh, yellow, which is transition. That's tools. How are you gonna uh, put your vision into your tools, and can you use your tools well to communicate your vision? Number three is green, which means go, right, in a traffic light. So go means present it to the world, communicate it, you know. Be confident about it. Not, not only be confident, um, spread, the, spread, spread your work. Don't just take picture and then let it sit on your hard drive, you know. Create an exhibition, you know. Mm. Make it a part of the marketing in a company. Mm, or, yes. you know. That's Basically, really communicate your, your photograph. So the traffic light system goes a little something like red. You should stop and think about what you should, yes. should do next. Uh -huh. Yellow means that you should be, be able to be use able your, tools to your tools to 
to communicate what you want. Yes. And then, and then the, the green light means you should start doing it, you know, start, start publishing your publishing work, your work right. to get it out there for yes. people to see. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, I think that would be it for today. Thank you so much for coming to Jagalinsa and for being here. one of our um, speakers here in Jagalinsa Stories. We hope you guys, you will enjoy um, listening to Mr. Andrew Soriano's story. I hope it inspires you a little bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to comment down below on who you guys would want to see next in our channel. My name is Janice Cardi and this is Mr. Andrew Soriano and sure. this is Jacqueline's Stories. Bye! Bye.